Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Thanks for joining me for another start to finish video. Today, who is it this time? Oh, it's an incoming message from Gina Ahrens from the US. I wonder what Gina's got for me. Good morning, Mike. This is your mission should you choose to accept it. Create a journal page using the following prompts. Use your least favorite color. Add marks with found objects. Add newspaper or magazine text. Add splatters and drips. Add marks with eyes closed. Add stencils. Add circles. Draw with your non-dominant hand, print with bubble wrap, and add something shiny or sparkly. This message will self-destruct in two seconds. Good luck. I'm gonna go and do... Okay. So I'm working in my 10 by 10 journal and I'm going to add a thick, generous layer of white gesso all over the page as my base layer for this art journal page. Once the gesso is laid down and I've set it with my heat gun, we're ready to start step one of my mission inspiration. For me, my least favorite color is purple. So for my page, I'm going to use the crushed grape acrylic paint from Dilutions. I'm just going to randomly apply some of the purple paint across the page using a baby wipe. Now because I've already pre-gessoed my page, the paint will move a lot easier across the page than it would have done if I hadn't put that gesso down. Step two is to add marks with found objects. So I'm using the black marble acrylic paint from Dilutions again. I'm going to be using all Dilutions paint for this, this page. And I'm just going to make some marks with pieces of, or bits of plastic, lids, tubes, and scrapers that I've picked up and found uh, over the last year or so. And I'm just going to use a combination of square and circle shapes and a scraping tool which is just going to give me some great dot effects.
I discovered that after trying to um, pick up some of the paint off my craft mat that it wasn't picking up enough so I decided to use one of those cosmetic sponges and apply the paint onto the actual scraper itself directly because it just seemed to work a lot better and there was a more of an even coverage on it so you know cosmetic sponges do have their uses. So all finished for step number two, so ready to move on to step three, which is adding magazine or newspaper text. So for step number three, I've already gone ahead and torn some strips out of a Sunday supplement magazine and this article was all about art so I thought it was rather appropriate so I've just torn some strips and I'm just going to layer um, these across the page in random positions there's no plan I'm just doing it where it takes my fancy Okay, I think after this piece we're going to call that a day and we're just going to give it a quick heat blast to make sure that it's all nicely dry and all sealed before we move on to step number four where we're getting a bit dribbly and drippy. We're sticking with the Dilutions brand and this time we're going to use the white linen acrylic paint. So I'm just going to take some of the white paint from the lid with a brush and apply that to my craft mat. Then using a pipette, there we go, I'm just going to take some water and add the water to the white paint to make the paint more fluid and movable which makes easier drips and dribbles. I could have used the brush to add the drips and dribbles but a pipette is just as good a tool to use as any other so you know it's nice to vary occasionally you get different type of effects with the pipette that you would have done with the brush so it's really what takes you fancy it's all about taking your fancy today so i'm going to go ahead and carry on adding some drips and dribbles and I'm just going to then start tilting the page to make that paint start moving down. So the larger blobs that I've put on the page, I want to start running to make some proper drips. So I'm going to do that. There you go. You can see them start to come down the page now. I'm also going to encourage them to move even further by using the heat tool and the air movement from the heat tool should push them further down the page too. I'm going to carry on using the heat tool on the page to make sure that all those drips and dribbles are nice and dry and then we're going to cut to step number five. So using the post box red acrylic paint from Dilutions again, this time I'm going to use the same square um, mark maker that I used before and 
I'm actually close it. Well, I've closed my eyes for this one, which is why you'll see that they're not straight. Um, as I'm stamping down, they're going off a little bit of an angle, not as straight as I would want them to be with my eyes open. And at one point, I almost missed the page completely. Now, I did keep my hand on the page just so I had some sort of spatial awareness as to where it was going. Now, that's the bit where I nearly came off the page altogether. So, eyes wide open again. We're on to step number six, and we're getting out the stencils. So the Vibrant Turquoise Dilutions paint, we've also got another one of those cosmetic sponges and the Alphabet Border stencil from Dilutions. It's a very Dilutions page this. So for this page I am mixing cool colour tones with warm colour tones. I've used purple and red which are very warm and I've used turquoise blues and I'm also going to use an orange in a little while, the squeezed orange uh, acrylic paint. But that's the key. I'm using acrylic paint and I am making sure that I'm drying all the paint between each layer which means no matter whether I cross over from cools to warms I'm never going to get mud. So I'm never going to mix those colours together so that they react and turn brown. Um, and that's the beauty of using acrylic paints on an art journal page. You pretty much can use whatever colour you want, providing that you do dry in between, particularly if you're using acrylic paint. Not so much if you're using water-based paints because they do react very, very easily. But because acrylic paint, when dry, are permanent, then you can pretty much mix and match to your heart's content. My next step, step number seven, I have to add circles. I decided here that I was going to have a little bit of fun. Now recently I was sent some cocktail umbrellas in some happy mail. So thanks Thomas. I have utilised those cocktail umbrellas. I did deconstruct them and I flattened out the actual umbrella part and I've actually kept the pieces of cardboard, the, the spokes if you like, to the umbrella on the tissue. I'm going to stick those down flat onto my page. So this is me adding circles. Gina didn't say what type of circles to add, so I'm improvising. So you can see me here using my fingers, making sure that I'm pushing the tissue paper of the umbrella, making sure it's down and making contact with the page underneath. Because you have those cardboard spokes, it does lift a little bit, but with the right kind of persuasion, you will get them to stick down. And here's a little close-up of those umbrellas on the page. Don't they look great? So before we move on to step number eight, I needed to add a focal point to my page. So here is that new collage set, the Steampunk Lion Man or Tiger Man, depending on what you want to call him. Um, and I'm just applying him to the page using multi-purpose glue. So I've already stuck, I've applied the glue to the back of the, the image and then sticking him down. And I will go over the top of him with the matte medium to make sure he is totally and utterly sealed before I move on to the next stage. So this is the full composite image in one from the collage sheets on my Etsy store. So you can, use the individual items, the wings are there separate, the, the tiger's head is there separate, the body of the steampunk man is there separate, but there is the full composite image so if you don't want to use all the individual pieces you can just use the one image like I've done. So 
Depending on whether you've got the time or the inclination, you can use either. And while I've still got the Mod Podge out, I may as well stick on my quote, my saying for my page, and as I said earlier, it's whatever tickles your fancy. And now, um, just to make sure that my Tiger Man, my winged Tiger Man, is completely and utterly sealed, I'm going to go and give it a real good coat of the Mod Podge and make sure that it is completely and utterly covered. And then I'm going to get the heat gun and go over it, making sure that it is completely and utterly dry before moving on to the next stage. Now that our page is completely dry, I'm taking out my Unisigno White Rollerball gel pen and I'm going to use my left hand because I'm right handed and I'm going to draw some scrabbly circles around the page but then I'm also going to outline my Steampunk Man with that pen too using my left hand. I know, I'm being very brave. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm also going to add some doodle dots onto that purple cocktail umbrella too. And here we go, this is where I start outlining the sleeves of my steampunk man with that white pen. Um, because I am right handed I was very very nervous that I was really really going to mess this up and ruin the whole thing. But I pretty much held it together. I just made sure that I rested my wrist on the page or on the edge of the page to make sure that I had some kind of stability and it kind of turned out okay. Okay, so now that trauma's out of the way, we're on to step number nine, nearly finished. And again, we're bringing out the white linen and acrylic paint, and we're going to print with some bubble wrap. So again, I'm just going to take the paint from the lid, apply it onto my craft mat, and then just stamp using the bubble wrap randomly around the page. Quick and easy step and quite effective, then all I'm going to do is just give that a blast with a heat gun to make sure it's all nice and dry before step number 10. Okay, it's time to get glittery. So add diamond stickles or add something shiny or sparkly is step number 10. So here I am, I've taken my stickles, I'm just using the diamond ones and I'm just going to lightly add a little border of that stickle glitter glue all the way around my steampunk man and then I'm just going to blend it in with my fingers all the way around that way he will look as though he is has a, well, a kind of shiny glittery halo So I'm going to try and hold the book up to the light so you can see that glitter, that shine, but I don't know whether the light's actually going to pick it up. With it still being wet, it's just going to look glossy because it is wet rather than sparkly because of the glitter. But that is step number 10 complete and my mission inspiration steps are complete from Gina. I'm just going to add my final touch 
to the page. So just using the food ball pen, I'm just going to go around my quote with the pen and just add some black sketchy lines just to make that, that quote pop a little more from the page. And then we're calling it done. Congratulations, Mike. Well done. Mission accomplished. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of fun. I certainly enjoyed putting that art journal page together with Gina's instructions. If you'd like to see the art journal page that Gina's created with the instructions that I've given her, then you can pop across to her YouTube channel. The description or the link to her channel is in the description area of this video below. So do pop across and have a look at what Gina's got to offer. So that's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, then you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. So that's all from me. Stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.